Now we come to borders and shading, an area of learning that students usually like because it lets their artistic temperament out a little bit. Borders and shading is about adding borders around words or paragraphs and background colours. We've got a title here on the screen. I want to put a border around it, so I need to select the text. We then choose from the menu, Format, and drop down to Borders and Shading. And here we have the Borders and Shading dialog box with three tabs. We're going to focus on the Borders and the Shading tabs. Basically on the Borders tab we work left to right. So we choose our basic style of border. I'm going to choose Box. We then come across to the middle section and choose the style that we want to use, the style of line that we want to work with. It's quite a variety there. I'm going to choose this one. Once you've chosen that, you can see there's a blue line around the outside. So you can see that's the one that you've chosen. But you can always go back and modify these at any time. Once you've chosen your line style, we then choose the line colour. Again, you can get more colours there that we looked at earlier. When we're working with font colours, it works in exactly the same way. I'm just going to keep it simple. And then we could use the width, otherwise known as the thickness of the line. But Microsoft do like to call it the width of the line. And you can just choose from the drop down the thickness that you'd like that line to be. All these changes are previewed in the preview window. So as you make changes, you can see what it's going to look like. Once you've made those changes, we then come to the third step, which is what do we apply the tech, the border to? You can see it's picked up text. That's because I selected some words. If I click the drop down, you'll notice that I can also select paragraph. I'll show you the difference between those two as we go through the video. I'm going to keep it on text and then we click OK. Those settings are then applied to my text. But it's not red, I hear you shout. No, because if you remember, the text is selected, which inverts the colours. So I need to click away to see the real effect. And there we can see a tight border, red, double line, around the outside of the words. If we want to make modifications to that, you need to make sure you select exactly the same words again to make the changes. Format, borders and shading, and then you can make the changes that you need to make. Nice and simple. Let's try it on this paragraph. I'm not going to select anything just to be able to show you the difference here. Format, borders and shading. On the borders tab, choose your basic style. That's your first step. Second step is choose your line style and your colours. And finally, the thickness. Once you've selected those, you go into the third step, which is making sure that you are applying this to what you want to apply it to. See, we've got paragraph selected there. That's because I didn't actually select any text, so there's no confusion. It will be around the paragraph. We then click OK, and there we can see the shading, uh, sorry, the border around the whole paragraph. Try that again on the next. I'm going to select the word jumps this time. Format, borders and shading. Choose your basic style. I'm going to put a shadow on this time. Choose your line style that you like the look of. Colors, thicknesses. Make all those settings. Now, apply to. I've now got a choice because I've selected some text. If I select text and OK, it applies it around just the text. Select that again. If, however, I had chosen paragraph, then the computer ignores the fact that we'd selected the word and applies the setting to the whole paragraph. Now you do just have to be careful what you are applying to. Just go and undo that a few times to get back. If I selected this text, because it's not a, well, it's a full paragraph by the definitions of 
um, of word, but it's not a full line of text. If I choose format, borders and shading now, and choose my box style, line style, color, thickness, if I choose text, because I'd selected the text, it'll be a nice tight border around just the text. If, however, you select paragraph, watch what happens. See, it's put a border around the whole paragraph, even though there's nothing to fill that paragraph. So you have to make sure you know what it is that you want to do. Now, quite often, people can think they're stuck inside this border system. I'm inside all of our boxes inside that paragraph. If I press the Enter key now to drop down, you see how the border expands, and people think they can get locked in. Remember, you can switch on your Show Hide, and you can get rid of those Enter key presses just by deleting. If you feel as though you are stuck inside a border, you're not. You just need to click outside it, rather than pressing the Enter key. So let's have a look at shading now. We'll do it on this paragraph. So I'll select the paragraph. And you don't need to because it works on the paragraph. Format, borders and shading. You can mix these up so we can still add a border if we wish. I'll put a dotted red border around, making sure it's applying to the paragraph. Now I'm going to switch to the shading tab. And on the shading tab, I can choose a background colour. You can see the preview window, what that will do. It'll put a colour behind the text. Again, you can select more colours there for tighter control over your colour choices. Click on OK. And you can see the effect that we've got a yellow shading around behind the text. And you can do that on text as well. So we can select two or three words. Format. Borders and shading. On the shading tab, choose your background. And OK. And it shades behind the text for the colour that you have chosen. So borders and shading, really quite straightforward. Select the text that you want to work with, be it a word or a paragraph, then format, borders and shading. Two tabs, borders, work from left to right and just dial up the settings that you want to work with making sure that you are applying it to what you want to apply to. Do you want to apply it to the text or the paragraph? You make that choice. Once you've set up your borders, do you want some background shading as well? Sorted. For a little bonus. We don't need to do this in ECDL, but just to show you it, just go back into that format borders and shading. This time we'll look at the central tab, page border. Works in exactly the way as normal borders, but it'll go around the outside of the whole page. So you can choose a border style, style of line that you want, the colours that you want, the width that you want, and OK. And notice now that we're applying it to the whole document, and OK. And that applied to the whole document. You can see it running around the outside. A word of warning though, when you're using those, you can find conflicts with your printers and you can lose some of those lines. So it can take a little bit of fiddling about depending on what kind of printer you are using. So that was format, borders and shading, page borders, dial up your settings. Added bonus number two, art. You can choose, instead of lines, word art. I'll just move that up so we can see it a little bit easier. So when we click the Art button, you can scroll through all the word art type of borders. So if you want pens, for example, or bricks, you select it and it uses those bricks as the border around your page. And again, that could be quite effective. Borders and shading. 